let's create our design. I'm going to start with the M since it's the centerpiece of a logo. It also has the micro chenille which I will want to sew first. So we will grab our text tool, select the font that we want to use, set our letter height, and then type our M. Now I need to convert this to a complex fill. There's a couple different ways I could go about it. The simplest way would be to grab our complex fill tool and then manually outline our shape. But that can be a little time consuming, so I want to avoid that. So to save a bit of time, I will select the letter, use my change element type tool, select the type of element I want to use, and then hit replace. You'll notice that with certain fonts and certain specific characters, some pieces won't generate quite properly. So we can just go ahead and edit this real quick. Um, I will turn on my grid view just so I have some nice straight reference lines and I will click some points onto our wireframe grid. I'm holding Alt to constrain these points in increments of 15 degrees. We'll line that first one up with that grid line. We'll select another point, again holding Alt to constrain that line. Line that up where we need it to be. Then we've got our letter. Go ahead and turn off my grid. Now to get this to work for our micro chenille, we do need to change a bunch of settings. So I will select it, right click, then open my properties window. First we will change some of our top stitch settings. I will change my density to around 15 points. We'll see once I hit apply that our fill looks super sparse. This is mainly to accommodate for the thickness of the Burmalana thread that we'll be using but to also allow those loops to have some more space to spread out. Um, here I'm also going to change my stitch angle to around 90 degrees. This is subjective, but I just like having some straight loops on there. Then we will change our stitch length to 28 points. Changing our stitch length like this will have our loops be closer together, at least in the direction of our stitch angle which gives it a much tighter look and also prevents it from looking more like a bird's nest. Once we've got our top stitch settings, now we'll open our underlay. So I'll select that and uncheck my auto underlay. Now I want both of these to be set to fill and my density around 50 points and our stitch length will actually change that to 50 points as well because we do not need these stitches to be as close together as we do on the top. And for my angle, I just want to ensure that not only are my underlay angles perpendicular to each other, so 45 and 135 degrees, but I also want to make sure that this is offset from my top stitch angle. So since my top stitch is 90 degrees, we'll see that this creates a nice diagonal grid behind our top stitching, so we will leave that there. Now. Once we've got this set up, we should be good to go with this, but I find that having one layer of top stitch can look pretty sparse. So we will actually duplicate this either by hitting Control D on your keyboard or right clicking and going to duplicate. Now I will open my properties for that last element. I am going to disable both of my underlays. We'll hit apply. And then I want this top stitch angle to be perpendicular from the other top stitch angle. So since the first one was 90 degrees, I'll set this one to 180. So that way they're all running vertically. And this will fully cover this area with our Bermelana stitches. Now that we have both layers of our micro chenille together, I'm going to add a border to this. So I'll select this top layer, go to change element type, select single line center and then hit add. This will add a nice satin border to our shape. If we scroll in a little bit we'll notice that these corners are a little different from each other. Uh, that's just because of these points that are in here. So if I select those two and hit delete, now those corners match. So I'll delete those other points that we don't need. From here we can colorize this and we are done with our micro chenille letter. For the other text elements, we will grab our lettering tool, select the font. I'm going to set my height to around half an inch tall, and then I'm going to use my arc 
line type. So we'll type out our text. Once I'm done typing that out, I can grab this handle down here at the bottom to change the radius. I want this to pretty closely hug that center M. Then I will grab this. I'm going to duplicate this as well. So right click, then duplicate. I will drag this down. Then we are going to right click, open properties, type in our other text. Now you'll see if I hit apply, and then if I flip this text around, it's not going to arc how I want this to. This is not legible. So if I open my properties menu once again and switch to counterclockwise for my arc type, you'll see that this brings our letters right side up, and that's legible again. From here, we could adjust our spacing settings a little bit. I do want these a little further out, so we'll try 20% on our auto kern, which I think I'm happy with. Then you can add any other decoration to this that you'd like. For instance, I have these little seagulls on either side of my image here. For these, I just pulled up some clip art and digitized over those. But now that our design is ready to go, we'll send this over to the machine.